Hi, good morning students. Nice to meet you all. Students, we have started our lesson number two, that is whole number. In last session, we have seen what is whole number, natural number, what is the difference between natural and whole numbers, how to do addition, subtraction and multiplication uh, on number line. And we have started to solve exercise 1 point, uh, sorry, 2.1. So we have solved question number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now today we are going to solve question number 7 from exercise 2.1. So students, in this question what we have to do, we have to compare the numbers, okay. As I told you before that suppose this is our number line, okay. This is our number line and I told you that uh, the whole numbers always on the right side, okay? So, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, when we are adding the numbers, okay? So, we move from to 0 to the right side. And when we are subtracting the uh, any number from uh, any number, so we are moving from right to the left side. So, here when you are comparing the number, you have to always see the left number of the given number. Okay, as I told you, when you are moving from the 0 to the uh, right side, so if suppose 2 is the number and the right uh, left side of the 2 is 1, so 2 is uh, smaller than the Oh, sorry, 1 is smaller than the 2. So, here on the left side of the 2, 1 is here. So, 1 is smaller than the 2. So, whichever number they will give you to compare. So, you have to find it out that given number is on, means on the which side of that given number. Means if that number is left side, so you have to compare the number. That number is smaller than the other number. So, let's see in first question, uh, seventh question they are saying, in each of the following pairs of the numbers, state which whole number is on left of the other numbers okay on the number line and also write them with the appropriate sign greater and smaller between them so here we have to find it out that first number is 530 and 503 so two numbers are there and out of these two number we have to find it out which numbers comes on the left side of which number okay suppose here 530 is here and uh, here 530 and 503 number is there. So we have to find out the which numbers comes the left side of the of these given numbers. So simply we can say out of these two which number is more nearer to the zero more nearer to the zero. This is a simple identify we can easily identify from this whichever number they will give you two numbers if they will give you so what you have to do you have to find out which number is more nearer to the given number so we can say that 503 is more nearer to the more nearer to the zero so here we can say the 503 appear on left side of 530 okay so 5 503 comes comes early comes before sorry we can say before before 530 530 we can say that 503 comes before the 530 and that's why 503 appears on left side of the 530 so here 530 is greater than 503 okay so here what we have to decide that which number comes the left side and uh, after deciding that we have to put the appropriate sign between them let's see the another example so the next example is 370 and 307 so here as i told you very simple uh, logic you have to use that 
from these two numbers, which numbers comes or which number is more nearer to the zero, that number is always on the left side. So here. 370 comes after the 307 okay so here we can say 307 appears on left side of left side of 317 on a number line number line and therefore 317 greater than 307 I hope you are understanding what I am saying that after 0 which number comes first that is 307 and after 307 370 up comes so that's why 307 appears on the left side of the 370 on a number line and that's why 370 is greater than the 307 now let's move on to the next example and next example is now i'm going to rub all these question because the board is very small students you can do one thing after attending a session as I'm saying from the last session that after attending the session please write down all the questions from the given exercise important points in your notebook understand it and you can solve it uh, after understanding you uh, uh, after understanding the point you can write those point in your own words also so let's see the c question here the question is 98765 so here uh, the number is much larger than the previous one and the second number is 56000 789 now from these two number we easily understood that which one is bigger and which one is smaller that we can say this number is smaller than the first one 56789 is smaller than this number so we can easily say that 56789 appear on the left side left side of 98765 okay so now let's see the last example of this question last example is 98000 uh, sorry 98,30,415 and here the number is 1 crore 23,001 so 1 crore 23,001 so I think uh, in your uh, textbook commas are not there so if commas are not there so what you have to do is you have to put the commas on the uh, correct place when you are starting to first of all if you are not understanding where you have to put the comma as I said before you can write the name, initial letter of the place names and then you can put the comma okay so here we can easily say if we re from reading this number we can easily get that which number is uh, greater okay so here 98,000 uh, sorry 98,30,415 is here and the second number is 1 crore 23,001 uh, is there so here which value is more that is the 1 crore so 1 crore is automatically automatically means here this number is more uh, means the greater than this number so here 1 crore is greater than 98 lakh 30,450 so we can say that 98,30,415 appear on the left side of 
वन करोड़ ट्वेंटी थ्री थाउजेंड एंड वन सो स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस वे यू कैन टेक एनी नंबर एनी टू नंबर यू कैन कंपेयर देम यू कैन डिसाइड विच नंबर कम्स ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड ओके एंड इन दिस वे यू कैन डू द कंपेरिजन ऑफ एनी नंबर एंड यू कैन टेक द लार्जेस्ट टू लार्जेस्ट नंबर इट विल बी हेल्पफुल फॉर यू टू डू द प्रैक्टिस विद द लार्जर नंबर नाउ लेट सी द नेक्स्ट एंड लास्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ दिस एक्सरसाइज एंड हियर वी हैव टू find it out which statement is true or false so students and con means after some time i'm just reminding you that how you can write the question and answer and the exercise you can solve in your notebook that after attending the session please write down the important points in your notebook and after attending again the same uh, session you can attend again and you can pause the video and you can jot down the important points and you can write those important points in your own words also you will understood it better and you will remember what you have uh, uh, write it in your notebook to understand that concept okay now let's see the question number 8 here we have to what we have to do which of the following statements are true and which are false okay now let's see the what is the first statement the first statement is saying that zero is the smallest natural number natural number now you just see this sentence and just tell me uh, just think about it really zero is the smallest natural number but we have seen that in natural number zero is not there so this statement is false why because simply z we can say simply zero is not a natural number so let me remind you again which one is the smallest natural number that is 1 okay so let's see the next statement next statement is 400 is the predecessor of 399 okay what does it mean predecessor means minus 1 and they are saying 400 is the predecessor of 399 so here the statement is totally wrong that 400 is the successor of 399 if we we'll add 1 in 399 so we get 400 so 399 is the so statement should be like this if we want to correct this so statement should be 399 is the predecessor predecessor of 400 sorry 100 okay so here what is but what is our statement 400 is predecessor of 399 that is totally wrong so the statement is false and how to correct this statement that is 399 is predecessor of 400 now let's see the other statements Now third set state uh, third statement is zero is smallest whole number. 
uh, in whole number 0 is there and 0 is smallest whole number so this statement is true ok now statement D 600 is successor successor of 599 ok successor means what that we have to add 1 ok if we add 1 in let's see that really that 600 is successor of 599 so what we have to do to check this statement we will add the 1 in it so 9 plus 1 10 again here we have to carry 1 1 plus 9 10 and here 600 so this statement is true because after adding the 1 in 599 we, we got 600 so this statement is also true ok let's see the next statement next statement is saying that all natural numbers are whole numbers is it true in natural number for example take natural number start with 1 2 3 4 5 and so so, so on okay so here in whole numbers also 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and infinite numbers are there so here we can say all natural numbers are whole numbers so this statement is true okay now let's see the next statement Now, next st statement is exactly opposite to this previous statement that all whole numbers are natural numbers. Okay. In last session, we have seen that what is the difference between natural numbers and whole numbers. Okay. Uh, in whole numbers, natural numbers are there, but in natural number 0 is not there. But in whole number 0 is there and that's why all whole numbers are not, are not natural numbers. So here this statement is false. Why this statement is fall, false? Because in whole number 0 is there and in natural number 0 is not there. 0 is not in natural numbers and that's why this statement all whole numbers are not natural number but all natural numbers are whole numbers okay so let's see the other statement you can just write write it down all this statement in your notebook Now let's see, I'm going to rub this. Now let's see the next statement. And next statement is saying the predecessor of a two digit number is never a single digit number means this statement is saying that if you minus if you minus one from any two digit number you will not get a single digit number and this let let's prove it okay this uh, from the example we can understood it better okay for example uh, let's take 10 okay and 10 is two digit number if we will minus from 8 so we'll get 1 minus 10 that is 9 and 9 is 
single digit number so we are getting the single num uh, digit number from the uh, uh, after subtracting the one from the two digit number it means this statement is false this statement is false because after subtracting one from two two digit number and this is the uh, only two digit number i think this is the only two digit number after subtracting one from it we get this single digit and that is 9 so remember this after subtracting from the two digit number we get single digit number here they are saying that in after sub, the predecessor of two digit number is never a single digit number and this statement is totally false okay now let's see the next statement And next statement is one is one is smallest smallest whole number. Okay, smallest whole number. Now here we can say that this statement is totally wrong because in whole number 0 is there in whole number 0 is there because 1 is smallest natural number smallest 1 is smallest natural number 1 is not a smallest whole number so here the statement is false because 0 is smallest whole number smallest whole number because before 1 0 is there so that's why 0 is smallest whole number now let's see the next uh, statement Now next statement is the natural number 1 has no predecessor. Okay. Again I am telling you predecessor means what? Before number. Before number. So in natural system will say in natural system 1 2 3 4 and 1 is the only number here only number here that before 1 there is there is no number over there means before 1 here there is the place is not there for any number so here we can say the natural number 1 has no predecessor that is totally correct so this statement is true means before 1 there is no number in natural number system okay now let's see the last statement of this question the whole number 1 has no predecessor see here statements are same but the difference is here natural number is there here whole number is there in whole number 0 is there if we minus 1 minus if we minus 1 from 1 so we get the 0 so in whole number before the 1 0 is there 0 is there it means that in whole number 1 has predecessor okay predecessor but the statement is saying the whole number one the whole number one has no predecessor it means this statement is the statement is false so student these statements are means really good to revise what we have learned uh, about whole numbers and natural numbers and the difference between natural and whole numbers okay so here we have finished our exercise uh, 
uh, 2.1 students now he here we have seen how to uh, compare the numbers here in in question number seven we have seen how to compare the numbers and how to decide which numbers is on the left side of the given number and after that we have seen the different statements and different and if any uh, statement is false and we have also seen what is the reason behind that false statement now in the after this we are going to see the properties of whole numbers Now students, let's see what are the properties of whole numbers. We have seen how to do the addition, subtraction and multiplication on number line. Now let's see to perform uh, different operations of whole numbers. What are the property? So first we are going to see the all the properties for the addition only. Okay, then we will move to the subtraction, then multiplication and then division. Okay, now first closer property for the addition. What this property is saying? That the simple, this is very simple property that the sum of, the sum of two whole numbers, two whole numbers, whole numbers, is always a whole number this property is saying like for example from 1 from 1 2 2 3 4 5 6 all the whole numbers if you are adding them like for example here we will take let's consider for example let's consider let's consider here a and b both are both are whole numbers whole numbers okay if we are adding them a plus b is equal to c if these both are whole number the sum of these whole number is also is a also is whole numbers okay so the addition of the two whole numbers is also an uh, is also a whole number so for example on the place of a will take 5 okay and it will take 2 here so 5 and 2 both these two are whole number and the addition the sum of these two whole number 5 plus 2 is equal to 7 so 7 is also whole numbers okay when we get this kind of answer from the whole numbers we can say the closer property of addition or we can say the uh, the addition under the close property okay so the sum of two whole numbers is always a whole number okay so here you have to remember whenever you are adding the uh, whole numbers the answer of those whole numbers is also a whole number and that is the closure property of the addition okay now let's take one more example Okay. here if I'll take 24 plus 3 okay these both are whole numbers after addition of these two whole, whole numbers the answer is also whole number so the method to do the addition this is called the closure property or the addition under the closure property property now let's see the what is the next property for the addition and the next property is commutative property next property is Students, we are going to see all the properties for the addition. Okay, one by one we will see all the properties. Property. Now let's see what this property is saying. 
Here, the commutative property is saying the sum of the sum of two integers, two integers, integers, whole numbers, whole numbers remain, remain the same, remain the same if, if the order, if the order of number is changed. Okay. Now let's take an a equation here. Here, example. If you consider a plus b is equal to b plus c. Okay. If you add a into the b so you will get the same answer or if you will change their places b plus b also give a same answer means the addition of both the whole numbers will be the same after changing their places okay for example here let's take uh, let's do with the number here here if i'll write here 14 plus 13 is 27 right if I change their places, okay, now here on the place of 14, if I'll write here 13 and then if I'll write the 14, so answer will be the same. Here in this property, they are saying that any two whole numbers, if you are adding them, their answer will be the same after changing their order. Okay, so here you have to remember that addition will be the same. Sorry students, here my mistake, two whole numbers, here I have written integers. So the sum of two whole numbers remain the same if the order of, num uh, order of number is changed. So here you have to remember if you add 14 plus 13, it will give the same answer or if you add 13 plus 14, the answer will be the same. So here this property of the addi addition, they are saying that the sum of any two whole numbers will be the same after changing their places. Now let's see the third property for the addition. And third property is associating property. Now in associative property, in, uh, in commutative property, we add the two whole numbers. But here in associative property, when we are adding the whole numbers, the sum, the sum of three whole numbers remain the same even if the grouping grouping is changed and this property Property, property is called the associative property. Now let's see the example to understand what this property is saying. If here, if we we'll take the um, A, B and C. As a, if you consider a, b and c as a whole number, so here a plus b, they are in a one group, okay, and then add the c in it, okay, is equal to a plus b in bracket b plus c, okay, 
if you first add a plus b means if you add a and b first and then if uh, then uh, add c okay the answer will be the same if you change their order okay for example now let's understand what this equation is saying with the number okay if here i'll do it here okay if consider in the same we just put the numbers in this equation suppose we consider a is here 5 and b is 7 okay 7 here okay a plus 7 5 plus 7 plus here take 9 okay 5 plus 7 is equal to 12. 12 plus 9 is equal to 12 plus 9 is 21. Okay. In this order, we get the answer 21. Now, let's see. in If we change their order, so it will get the same answer. Let's see. What is the A here? 5. Okay. 5. After that, what is the B here? 7. C, 9. Okay. Here. If we add first, 7 plus 9 is equal to 16 plus 5. So, 5 plus 16 is 29. We get the same answer here. That is 21. So, here in this associative property, the addition will be the same. If you change their places, the value will not change. When you are adding the whole numbers, you have to remember this associative property is saying the addition of any three numbers will be the same after changing their place also. Now see students, here we have seen three properties for the addition. First, close under, uh, uh, closure property, then commutative property and associative property. Now let's revise what we have seen in these three property. Okay. First property, closure property. In this we have seen, if you add the two whole number, it gives always a whole number. So 2 plus 7 is equal to 9. These two are whole numbers and the sum of these two, two numbers is also whole number. This property is saying like this that when you are when you are adding two whole numbers, it always gives the whole number. The second commutative property is same. property saying the addition of two uh, whole numbers gives the same answer after changing their orders for example here 5 plus uh, here we take 8 plus 3 okay 8 plus 3 is equal to 11 if we'll change their order first if we'll add 3 and uh, here, uh, here we will take 3 and 8. So, addition of these two numbers are also same. So, when you are adding whole numbers in different order, it gives the same answer. Associative property is same. Associative property is same. When we are adding 3 whole numbers, if we are changing their place, uh, if we are changing their order, still it, it uh, still we get the same value. For example, here I'll rub this one. Seven plus four, okay. Seven plus four and here three. Okay. Seven plus four is equal to eleven plus three is equal to fourteen. Okay. Now here, if I change their places, okay, here, here, I will write 7 and in bracket, I will write 4 and 3. 4 plus 3 is equal to 7 and add this 7 and the answer is same. Here, our associative property is also saying, if you, you will get the same answer after changing their places also. The difference between commutative property and associative property, here in the commutative property, we are adding two whole numbers. Two whole numbers. And here, we are adding three whole numbers. 
थ्री होल नंबर्स नाउ स्टूडेंट्स इन नेक्स्ट सेशन we will see the closure property uh, sorry we will see the properties for the subtraction where we have seen these closure property are applicable for when we are subtracting the whole numbers the one more important thing when we are adding uh, the whole numbers you have to remember the additive identi uh, identity uh, what does it mean additive identity now students here remember this is very important thing that you have to, you have learned it but we don't know this mathematical term for that concept so this mean if we are adding if zero is added to any whole number any whole number number the sum remain remain the same the same we can simply say if we are adding zero uh, in uh, if we are adding zero with any number in any number we get the same number for example 7 plus 0 is equal to 7 or 0 plus 7 is also 7 so here the number the zero when you are adding remember zero is additive additive identity okay i'll i'll rub this one therefore zero is additive identity for of whole numbers just now we have seen if we are adding zero in any number we get the same number so after adding zero the whole numbers will remain means remain same means it does not change the value because zero does not change the value of the number when addition is performed on the on the number okay so remember what is the additive identity identity of whole number that is zero zero is additive identity of whole numbers okay so student we have seen in this session we have solved the question number 7 and 8 from exercise 2.1 and here we have seen the we have started properties of whole number and here we have seen three properties for the addition only so in the next session we will see the properties for the subtraction multiplication and division okay students so revise all these property solve more examples do the use all this property and do the addition of uh, whole numbers uh, using the closure property using commutative property and associative property you can make your own numbers and you can solve them in next session we will see the remaining properties for the different other different operation